The Money Show. Personal Finance. Warren Ingram from Galileo Capital. Some of them do an annual survey, and I'm not a big fan of surveys, but I do think they give an interesting perspective on trends as to what is going on. And the most significant impact is one that should be quite logical, especially as South Africa's middle class is being taxed harder than it's ever been, to, well, harder than it has been in our modern democracy. And inflation is eroded incomes and the cost of living is, is excessive. Um, and people are beginning to feel strain, uh, to take strain, according to the, the Sunlum, what they call it, the Sunlum 2017 benchmark survey. And, and it's an interesting one for me. So I agree with you. I'm, I'm not a big fan either, but, but they, they're surveying interesting people and people people that are well-educated professionals who earn 60% of them or more or more of them earn around 300,000 rand a year. Mm-hmm. So, so that is the middle class that everybody talks about. That is, that is South Africa's middle class. And why is a middle class important? Because that's your stabilizer in an economy. That's the, that's the, the, the engine, but also the stabilizer. That's what makes politics stable. That's what makes your, your ec- economy work. If the middle class is going well, the, the, the economy is going well. And if the middle class is growing its income, they become more confident. They spend more, they, they earn higher, they earn more they every single year. They start buying things like cars and keeping companies like General Motors exactly. engaged in an economy like South Africa. Uh, they pay taxes. Um, um, you know, um, everybody pays VAT, of course, everybody pays the tax on petrol, but they pay higher and higher levels of personal income tax as their lifestyles improve. And, and that is the engine that that then educates their children to the next level you know moves them up and, and and gives them a better life so so this is a that that's why that's why i think this is an important survey that that is why we need to understand this is the litmus test for for where we really are and everything else to me is a lot of noise a lot of the time mm-hmm. and what we're seeing is they're not in good shape i mean there are debt levels we always know that middle class south africa has always got high levels of debt but it seems to be can, dare I say it's spiraling out of control or certainly getting very difficult to control? Well, well so, so more than half of them are worried about short-term debt. And, and they're, they're going through months where they, they cannot make ends meet, uh, you know, a few times or a few months out of every single year. And, and short-term debt's really concerning because that's your credit card, your personal loan, and your vehicle payments. I, and and I'm, I'm not laboring the, the General Motors point here, but, but it is actually a, a clear indicator of what's going on. And, and so that, that's what we're seeing now. Now, we're seeing uh, that that middle class, uh, if they're struggling with credit cards and personal loans and they can't make their payments, that's telling you that they're drifting from the middle class down again. Um, and also, if you are worrying about debt and you're worrying about servicing that debt, you're not investing, you're not saving, you're not planning for a future that is 10, 15, 20 years away. No. Uh, I, I mean, so, so the, the kind of the miracle, of the, the new South African miracle is dying. And we see it here. This is This is it. So, like, I mean, as depressing that, as that is, and that's I know a big is, statement actually, but I'm, I'm, I can't argue with you on it. And 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 why I say that is, uh, they the, the other big concern. So so if you if more than half of of our middle class is worrying about uh, about short term debt, they they are equally concerned and and now unable to fund good education for their children. So 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 they can't give their their kids a better life. Than what they had, and and so the the sort of multiplier that we expect from our middle class, that the one that grew the American economy, the one that's busy growing the Chinese economy in its next level, mm-hmm. is is going backwards, and it is slowly but surely dying. And, and what 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 happens in this sort of scenario too is where people are battling to make ends meet, and they're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul is they taking away the safety net that financial planners like yourself like to talk about things like i don't know the the emergency plan the three months of after tax money that you should have accessible in a couple of days so you can put it into a fixed deposit or whatever the case might be but that's already been used probably in many cases it, it, in fact it doesn't exist anymore if it I ever mean, did i mean if you if you're and i think and i think this was a you know this was the, the the part of the of the south african economy that was growing well and and so if they if they can't make uh, their, their credit card repayments on on some months of the year then then you know the emergency fund's gone and and so you're right so so the cl- sort of classic financial planning 101 here is is unfortunately just not not working and and so uh, i guess it's time it's time to kind of do a revisit you know for mm. for both 
that, that middle class and I guess everybody else to, to it, kind of say, well, what, sh- what should we be doing? Uh, I mean, also we've had, we've had um, the middle class in South Africa has had a couple of really good decades and we've become quite used to the fact that asset prices keep going up. So if you manage to buy a house in the 1990s, chances are it's worth a huge amount more than it was back then. But if you bought a house in the 1990s, odds are you might have some kids who are coming into the environment where they would like to buy a property, but you don't have the disposable income um, to, unless you sell your house and realize some of the equity in your property or borrow against your house to to, to lend them some money to put down a deposit on their first home, yeah. at whatever level that might be. And- and I think, and I think it's right. And I think uh, w- what's actually happening is that th- that those kids are just staying at home. Uh, they're, they're not leaving anywhere, and and they're, they're struggling. Uh, it's, I feel I feel like a really a, a prophet of doom here. But but those kids are are, are probably going through uh, through t- tertiary education without uh, prospects for jobs. I, I'd argue that many, but we're not alone in this. I mean, I would argue that they're in many many societies and quite well developed societies, especially where asset prices have run ahead of themselves. Um, there are many families that are sticking together longer, and kids are staying at home longer, and that brings its own issues um, because it is it's expensive to move out. It's expensive expensive to get that independence that you and I might have taken for granted. So, so I mean, to, to, to your point earlier about uh, about growth, you know, that, that, that's how you solve this problem. You yeah. know, a growing economy gives uh, gives the middle class then some some room to breathe, but also it gives their, their kids uh, access to employment because if, if the economy is growing, it means new jobs are being created. It's a place for, for and them the, to And grow. it gives people who are struggling an opportunity to move into that middle class as well because as the economy grows, the pie grows and you can make the slices of that pie just that little bit bigger. Nobody's going to like you for it very much, but I think you need to give us a little bit of financial planning, bit of medicine. So, so I think the first thing is, um, w- w- if you're finding yourself in the situation, uh, th- th- then the first step you've got to follow now is get rid of your bad debt. Uh, and and I know it's not easy, but but the starting point is, if you've got overdraft, if you've got credit card debt or personal loans or a, a car that you frankly can't afford, and you'll know that. I mean, it's, you, you don't need me to tell you if, you're, if, you're, if your car that you're financing now is, is unaffordable. It's, if it's squeezing you every single month, then, then you know it's unaffordable. And, um, and it's time to, to make some hard decisions. You know, I think um, you know, one of the things you need to know is you probably need to sell that car and buy a heck of a lot cheaper one. And that's for, for South Africans, especially those who live a long way from work or who might be in a sales job or a job that requires a lot of travel, it's the one thing that they've got that makes them feel like they're special in the world. And we're far too attached to our cars. Uh, I agree. Um, but it, it's time to harden up a little bit. And, and if that's the biggest sacrifice you've got to make, you'll be okay. Exactly. And I think, uh, you know, rather rather have a cheaper car and, 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 and not have to worry about paying off your credit card at 25% a year uh, because th- that compound r- uh, interest rate against you, there's nothing in the world that will compete against that. So, so that's the thing to, to, to cancel. So you've got to do that. Then the, the emergency fund that we've spoken about, three months worth of your expenses, uh, put that somewhere. Put that in a, in a money market account or, or something that's, that's linked to your banking profile that you can draw on so that you don't go into your credit card when something happens because life always happens. So, so you get the, you know, the emergency um, claim, you know, uh, insurance claim, you need to pay your excess, maybe it's on your car. But, this, but this is a staged process. I mean, again, the idea of getting rid of the bad debts, that may take you months. It, it could take multiple months in order to do. But be disciplined about it. Don't try and do all of this at once. Don't get, try and get rid of your bad debts while setting up the emergency fund because you're just going to extend the pain for longer. A- agreed. And, and I think, um, b- but what I would do is take the radical step in terms of getting rid of the emergency fund hard. So in other words... Getting rid of the debt hard. Get, sorry. Getting rid don't of, get rid of the emergency yeah, fund. Don't, please don't get rid of the emergency <laughs> fund. Uh, <laughs> unless you've got a lot of debt, then maybe yeah. you need to diminish. And, and I think the point there is um, y- y- you need to take the, those big calls now uh, and, and take the sacrifices now because, unfortunately, if interest rates stay high, this problem is only going to get bigger on you. It's only going to snowball on you. you you've got 30,000 rands worth of emer- <coughs> My I beg your pardon. The, the, the thought of it is, is beginning to choke me. Um, you, you've got, say, 30,000 rands worth of short-term debt that's corroding your ability to, to save. You've got 30,000 rand in an emergency fund. Do you do a once-off dive into that emergency fund? Pay off those debts, kill them dead... And don't go back into debt and build up your emergency fund. Hundred percent, because that that uh, debt <laughs> is probably costing you uh, in the region of 20, uh, 20 25 percent, yeah. and your your emergency fund might be earning you somewhere around seven or eight percent, which would be fantastic. But the point is, the compound effect of that that debt growing against you is just far too high. So you've actually got to knock it, and then the very next month 
start saving for your emergency fund. Uh, but don't treat your emergency fund like a, a, like a piggy bank. Use it this once. Allow yourself that to get yourself out of trouble. But don't get into the habit of saying, ah, that's my emergency fund, and then live it up again for another year yeah. and then dive into the emergency fund uh, once I'm, again. I'm going to always tell the youngsters that start work, you know, it's not your handbag or your holiday or your beer fund. It's it's really for emergencies. And, and that's beer the point. is an emergency <laughs> some days <laughs> but Telling not that me. kind of emergency um, okay and then only once you've done that can you really start thinking about investing the, and, the, and you may be a, a year or two away from investing and that may freak you out but unless you deal with the demons you you, you really can't afford to to get into the investments and I, and I think that's exactly the point if we know tough times are coming and, and, and let's face it tough times you know have arrived feel and it and there might yeah. be a, yeah, yeah. Th- th- then you need to actually take all those actions now Warren Ingram, he is a director, he's a financial advisor at Galileo Capital.